Today I'm going to look at the new Acaso V50 Pro Special Edition. This is a 4K 20 megapixel action camera. It comes with a waterproof housing. Let's check it out. It has 20 megapixel photo capability. It has a touch screen. And it'll shoot 4K at 30 frames per second video. This is brand new. I haven't even opened this yet. It comes with a remote control. You can also control it through your phone. A bunch of mounts and stuff. Normally I'd be putting this on my bike and we'd be taking it out for a ride. But it's the winter and my bike's not on the road. So I guess taking it out in the car is going to have to be all we can do for today. For showing off the picture quality. So open the camera up. camera comes attached to it's like a little stand that's on top of the box but it actually comes attached on a mount in the box we have our quick start guide a remote control various straps for attaching it to your body like a wrist strap and various mount pieces for attaching and for attaching camera to helmet and so forth here's a couple of, of uh, mounts that you can attach to a helmet it has a double-sided sticky tape on the back of it also comes with a housing that you can put the camera in for attaching it rigidly to other devices. As you can see, it comes with various bases. This is a battery charger, I believe. Yes, and it'll charge two batteries at once. The camera comes with two batteries, so you can carry twice as uh, much power with you, uh, a handlebar mount for mounting it on a bicycle or a snowmobile or whatever else, motorcycle, whatever else you want to mount it to. Also comes with tripod mounts so you can attach it to a tripod, attach the bracket to a, a tripod and it also comes with a standard threaded mount. extra double-sided sticky pads and some anchors and an extra plastic back for if you break the original one let's take a look at the camera itself we'll open up the camera and remove it from the case First, have to remove that, and there's another protector on the back of the camera itself, right there, and a lens protector that goes on the front to protect the lens. Normally, the camera is going to sit in a case just like that. But I'm sure the touchscreen only operates if you have the back open. First things first, let's uh, get a battery charged. The battery just goes in the bottom of the camera, just like that. And our SD card slips in the side. Got a 64 gig SD card I'm going to put in the camera. This camera also features a tripod mount, so you can mount it directly to a tripod without having to use any adapters. It does have the, see it does come with the adapter uh, screw mount as well, so that you can use it with on the, on the screw mount with a conventional mount because uh, the way that the camera is shaped your mounts would normally go into the, the case itself but if you want to use the camera bare without 
it be mounted in the case you can mount it directly using a screw mount let's check out some of the menus on the camera see what it does so uh, power is going to be I'm sure the red power button on top this being a touch screen tells me I've got two hours and 16 minutes and 48 seconds of recording time for 4k on a 64 gig card if I scroll up scroll up or scroll down there we go just tap it and uh, we can go into some of the settings on here so here's our, our setup for video or for photo and if we want to go into the setup for video photo or general for video here's select the video resolution so our choices are 4k 30 frame 2.7k 30 frame 1080p 60 frame right there's 1080p 60 frame 1080p 30 frame 720p 120 frames per second 720 at uh, at 60 those are our resolutions so right now we're currently set for 4k at 30 because that's what I'm going to shoot this demo in the codec we can pick either h264 or h265 h265 being the newer codec but not all players and not all uh, not all software can open it so I'm going to leave it in uh, h264 image stabilization on or off we'll turn it on video file length and time lapse interval so video file length unlimited one minute three minutes or five minutes I'm going to leave it on unlimited time lapse interval if you're doing a time lapse you can set it for 0.5 seconds 3 seconds 5 seconds 10 seconds 30 seconds or one minute for doing a time lapse video fast motion movie this is where you can create your own ultra lapse two times four times six times ten times or fifteen times maybe we will play around with that wind noise reduction uh, scene mode and date stamp so scene mode manual riding or winter or nighttime riding I would imagine would be for like riding a horseback or riding on a motorcycle or I think probably more horseback to take some of the, the bob out of it uh, scene mode uh, date stamp and then we're back to the video resolution effects you can add filters change your um, exposure and ISO settings white balance auto daylight shade tungsten light or white fluorescent it's currently set for auto general for settings control sounds distortion calibration so control microphone speaker level uh, LCD brightness super wide wide or medium is your your angle that you can and narrow or the angles you can shoot with 50 or 60 Hertz driving mode on and off Wi-Fi on and off that's for controlling it from your phone date and time that's where you can set the date and time and the time auto power off that'll turn it off if you're not actually making a recording quick record a quick re record would be for starting recording immediately as soon as you turn the camera on rather than pushing the button to start it and uh, USB for storage or as a PC camera so you can use this as a webcam or just for accessing the SD card reset Wi-Fi settings language format card so we'll format the card in the camera Okay, that but this button cycles through playback settings and uh, video camera still camera playback so we're into video camera mode and then the blue button over here will start the recording so now it's recording 
4K, 30 frames per second, and this is the one that we're going to use it with. I'm going to take it out in the car, and we're going to do some uh, shooting with this and take a look at the picture quality and the sound quality, because I'll be recording sound with it as well. Setting, you saw before, it's also controlled here. This is so you can control the camera with the remote control. Uh, do I have the RF setting on or off? Let's see. It is off, so if I turn the RF setting on, now it's on. When they are white, they're they're that's like graying them out. So black, they're on. Like if I hit beep, it'll stop beeping. When it's black, it's on. When it's white, it's off. So RF is now on. If I press the gray button on here, it'll start recording. So that way the camera can be mounted. Say you've got it mounted to your fender on your vehicle, or you've got it mounted to the bumper on your motorcycle and you want to start and stop it, you can have the remote control mounted to your arm and you can start and stop by just pressing a button, just like that. If you want to take a picture, you press the red button and that'll take a picture. And that one starts recording. So that's kind of a neat feature. You can do it from your phone as well. Now one thing I was kind of surprised to see was the choice of USB connector. You see most, most devices are using a USB-C connector or even a micro USB, but no, this one's using the older USB or a mini USB. So a much larger plug. Now you would wonder why would they tend to, what would appear to be, go backwards to a, a, an older type of connector. Well, quite frankly, the only reason I can see that they would do that is um, durability. The micro USB has got to be probably one of the easiest uh, connectors to damage. You try to put it in the wrong way and so forth when you're fiddling around with it, trying to plug something in when you're reaching around or trying to plug something in you can't see. It's easy to bugger up a micro USB. A uh, USB-C is very good, but uh, uh, they've chosen to go with the older mini USB. Okay, it does come with this shell that goes around the camera and the shell keeps the USB port open and that's what that's for is so that you can power it up. You can plug it in and have it operational from external power for long time recording so in other words you could power this up from probably a power bank or a USB power source. So if you were doing a long time lapse, for example, and you wanted to have the camera running for hours on end to record something that happened throughout the day in time lapse, or you were mounting it in a car to do a ultra lapse road trip, you could mount it on your dash and plug it in and keep it powered up. So that'll give you a longer recording time than uh, just relying on the battery. To control the camera from your phone, Download the Akeso Go app. I'm going to do that now. We're going to connect it to the Wi-Fi on the camera so I can show you how you can control it remotely from your phone. The app going, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tap on the screen here and I'm going to turn the Wi-Fi on. It's going to tell me what to look for. I'm going to launch my Wi-Fi. There it is. I have to enter the password. Connected, I'm going to say keep Wi-Fi connected and go back to the app. Okay, so go, add the device, and I'm going to tell it it's the, the and so you can do all the cameras. You can use the Brave 6, which I also have one of those. This is the uh, V50 Pro. So let's look for the V50 Pro right there. And next step. And that will load the camera video onto my phone and I can control the camera from my phone. Press the record button on here and it'll start the camera recording. Press the button again and it'll stop. record video and if I tap this it should show me that 
it's oh, it's going it, it, it turns the display off on here so now the only display is actually in the display on my phone and to tap again here to stop the recording and now it stopped and that is it and then to shut it down I can just disconnect turn the camera off I think I just hold the button here and it'll shut the camera off and disconnect the app let's take a look at the video that I shot with the camera mounted in my car when you put it in the clearest terms um, people are well what about this what about that you're never going to please everybody that's one thing that's sure it is so true I was looking at this video today and there was a caught on tape of girls engaging in an attack on another girl and we're talking about teenagers young teens 13 uh, 13 year old girls and Mishnar CMP have actually arrested two girls uh, after this attack was shown on social media yeah, horrifying. Just really disturbing to see, and your heart just bleeds for the young woman who is is being attacked. Just as chilling are the comments from the group that's watching it and egging on her attackers. It was terrifying and terrible. But yes, um, the school administrators were made aware of it. Law enforcement was made aware of it very quickly. Even the Ministry of Education is aware of it and uh, tweeted a response today and we'll have full coverage coming up on the news hour tonight. A quick comment on the speculation tax because I know a big hit, a uh, big criticism of this tax was that it was capturing too many- That's the attitude that, like, there's, sorry, there's, there's always um, um, like good exceptions and exceptions that, that exist for a reason. And, and that's why I think um, Dr. Bonnie Henry has always made these, you know, strong recommendations instead of issuing, you know, blanket orders. Um, and so, you know, Linda, you know, you're, you're from Alberta. Let's say that, you know, you have an apartment in, in Edmonton still that you rent out um, and you get a frantic call from your tenant saying, you know, the hot water tank exploded. Um, I'm moving out um, and you need to go and deal with it. That That is a reasonable exception. Um, to, to the rules and the problem as soon as you put in hard and fast rules you know thou shall not count then then you're you're delegating um you know so much power to that you know whether it's conservation officer or whatever it is who's manning that checkpoint um on on what is supposed to be a passable border so and one last shot this is the built-in ultra lapse shot directly in the camera at 10 times normal speed link to this is in the description I'm going to let this play out for the remainder of this file, and uh, we will catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching.